We are in the heart of France, a region known for its beautiful landscapes, magnificent architecture, and some of the most exceptional wines in the world. Welcome to Burgundy. There's no better way to explore the beautiful vineyards of this region than by taking a retro tour with one of the best guides in Burgundy. Uh, this vineyard is very, very special. There are two Grand Crus, the best, uh, the top of the top of uh, Burgundian production, just only one person, as I said. And uh, they are together, both uh, white Corton Charlemagne and red mm -hmm. Corton. Very expensive one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm assuming so if it's just one percent. <laughs> After exploring all these beautiful vineyards, we are finally ready to taste Burgundy. I'm amongst the most prestigious wine in the world. There's so many of them. In this region, actually, the white Burgundy accounts for about 60% of the wine production, but the red Burgundies are some of the most prestigious and sought-after wines in the world. Produced primarily from the Pinot Noir grapes, these wines are complex, seductive, and extremely age-worthy, the finest of which are only made in tiny quantities. I would say the first range for one bottle would be 50 euros, 5 zero, and the, the first price. And then you got Premier Cru around 100, 200, 300 euros bottle. Uh, Romane Conti is one of the most famous wines of the world and also the most expensive. Uh, it's 3,000, 4,000 euros a bottle. There are three main reasons why the high prices of Burgundy wine. Despite being one of the most famous and well-known winemaking regions of France, it accounts for only about 3% of nation's total production. The other reason is because of this, there is a high demand of the wine, which is increasing its value. And the third reason is that the weather here, it's quite unstable. This type of grapes we have, if you put them in south of France, no good, too hot. As we understood, this place is definitely about quality rather than quantity. If you're coming to Burgundy and you're a wine lover, it is the perfect place to be. However, we have so much more to explore, so let's keep going. The city I'm really excited to show you is Dijon, which is the capital of Burgundy, but what makes this place so unique is that the Dukes of Burgundy used to live here, and during their time here, they greatly increased the power and the prestige of the city of Burgundy and left their mark on France. The Palace of Dukes of Burgundy, which was built in the 14th century, still stands here today to represent the importance it played in the role of French's history. Inside the palace, there's a Museum of Fine Art. It is one of French's most prestigious museums with over 1,500 pieces of art. And just like all public museums in Dijon, this one is also free to enter. The current exhibition is dedicated to 18th century fashion, so we hope to get some ideas and change our style in the next video. For you, something like this, I think. I think this one will fit me better. And for you, maybe something like this. This must be our favorite room where the Dukes of Burgundy are buried in their tombs. They're massive, but the tiny etiquette details are so beautiful. One more thing Dijon gave us is the Eiffel Tower and the Statue of Liberty. As the founder of the Eiffel Tower company, Gustave Eiffel, was born here in Dijon. Impressed? Speechless. Look how many of them. More than 50. Oh, goodness. Yeah. One more thing you can't miss while in the city is the Notre Dame of Dijon. It has a three tier design, but the coolest thing about it is there's over 50 of these gargoyles. But you gotta take a step inside to see the stunning stained glass windows, some of which are spanning six meters in diameter. This place is also home to one of the French's oldest statues of the Virgin Mary. You gotta pay attention to the wall of Notre Dame because here there's an owl dating back to the 1500s. You're supposed to rub it with your left hand for good luck. The owls here are the symbol of the city and they're everywhere on the cobblestone streets and they take you throughout the city through main attractions. Anyways, we already know where we're going exactly. Mustard. Dijon is a birthplace of Dijon mustard, a traditional mustard of France. First used in 1336 at the table of the kings, but it didn't become popular until 1856 when the usual ingredients of vinegar was replaced with fur juice, the acidic juice of unripe grapes. They have so many different flavors. They have olives, peppers, and Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir! 
Another attraction is the architectural treasure of Burgundy, the Hospice of Bion. Medieval Charity Hospital, which is French's one of the most prestigious historical monuments. It is the finest example of Burgundy's architecture with its main attraction being the polychrome roofs. This area was actually devastated by two terrible events. They had the Great Plague here and also a hundred year war that killed off the majority of their population. During these hard times, the Duke's right hand man grew filthy rich, but fear for his soul being damned to hell, he attempted to buy his way to heaven by building this palace for the poor. But the hospice was not a place for them to have hope, it was a place where the patients came to die. So the care here was more often for the soul rather than for the body. On the other side of the room was actually a chapel so the patients could pray while in bed and also ponder about the painting that stood right at the altar. The painting of Judgment Day where Michael the Angel decided if one soul should be going to heaven or would be damned to hell. The Hospice of Bion is also known for owning 60 hectares of vineyards and producing some of the most famous wine in the world. This region of France was once the spiritual heart of the country and at one point the town of Cluny was home to a great monastery that at one point competed with the Vatican for being one of the most important and powerful centers of Christianity. It was the headquarters with over 10,000 monks. The abbots here answered to no kings, but directly to the Pope. They got people to stop polluting the monasteries, and they also talked Europe's wealthiest landowners into willingly giving away their estate to the monasteries in return for prayers that would save their souls. When you come to a new destination, we always recommend to catch either a sunrise or a sunset and found a perfect place for that, Rock of Salutra, which has a 360 degree views of the best white wine in Burgundy. And who likes hiking and vineyards the most? This guy. Where is he? Come on! Hiking! Come on! Look at that, look at that. We're going to the top, Cosmo. I look like Steve Prime, but it took us just 20 minutes, and voila, we're at the top. So Burgundy truly surprised us. It's such a unique region of France with amazing people, one of the best wines in France, charming cities, and I feel like it's a little bit underrated to be honest, but it so easily can compete with more touristy parts of France. I would agree 100% on that, and I think if you're looking for that essence of France, you have to come to Burgundy because I think you'll find it right here. And for now we have to say farewell though, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you on our next adventure. One more thing we'd love to share with you guys is this platform we've been using and decided to partner up with called Skillshare. It's an online learning community where you can pick up and improve various skills with over 25,000 courses on pretty much everything. Personally, we're using this platform to learn about video editing and how we can make our YouTube videos even better. They have the classes that lead you through the entire process, from writing the script to making your storytelling more engaging and creating the most authentic and interesting channel. One of the best parts for me is that these classes are made by other creators that we've looked up to and admired and actually inspired us to make our YouTube channel. For example, Yes Dairy, who are masters at creating meaningful yet entertaining content. And on Skillshare, you can find these classes about editing and storytelling by Thomas Daher, who's actually one of the main video editors for Yes Dairy. He literally takes you step by step through the entire process of storytelling and teaches you how to capture the viewers in the first few seconds so that they end up watching the entire video. He talks about getting that golden moment and how to deliver that important message throughout your video. And access to his course and nearly 30,000 other courses on Skillshare costs less than $15 per month. But the best part is that Skillshare decided to sponsor this video and is giving away a free one month access to their entire platform for the first 1,000 people who will use the link below. So now we all can learn from the world's most successful creators. And if you guys want to become YouTubers or improve any of your skills, I think it's a great platform to be a part of.